Hello everyone. Thank you for joining the session today. I'm Sunil from Ventana Microsystems. Prior to joining Ventana, I used to work in enterprise class servers for many years. In this session today, we are going to talk about ACPI for risk five, which is a key uh, feature to enable server class platforms. Here's the agenda for the discussion today. First of all, we'll try to understand what is advanced configuration and power of interface popularly known as ACPI. I will give you 10,000 foot view of ACPI because ACPI is fairly complicated specification with more than thousand page documentation. And I'll not be able to cover everything about ACPI, but my attempt is to give some details about ACPI for people who are new to ACPI to understand before we jump into the risk five specific things. Then we will understand why ACPI is such an important feature for enterprise uh, class servers. After that, we will try to understand what it takes to enable ACPI for risk five and what updates we need in the ACPI specification for risk five architecture. And I have done some prototype of Linux kernel booting on QMU risk five platform with ACPI support. I'll provide details about the changes what I had to, I had to make and uh, some screenshot about uh, Linux kernel booting. And there are many pending things which need to be done. I will provide those details in the next steps. Finally, we will have live Q&A session at least for five minutes. But even if time doesn't permit today, I really encourage you to provide your feedback and ask questions uh, to me directly via email later. That will be really helpful. So what is ACPI? ACPI is an you know, operating system agnostic standard originally created by Intel, Microsoft and Toshiba in 1996 with HP joining HP and Phoenix joining later. And it slowly gained the momentum and uh, widely uh, adopted by many operating systems and uh, processor architectures. Some of the key features of ACPI are power management at various levels like system power management or processor power management or device power management. It also provides performance management and thermal management framework. Other important feature of uh, ACPI is the platform device enumeration and configuration. It also provides system event mechanism uh, which can be used for uh, different uh, system events like uh, power management event or thermal management event or even device hot plug event. As you can see on the right hand side here, uh, the ACPI sits in between operating system and platform hardware. So it basically provides a table set of interfaces between uh, to the operating system and also set of tables to describe the hardware. ACPI mainly is structured as tables and the root of this table structure is called RSDP, Root System Description Pointer. The firmware will provide the information about this RSDP to the operating system via EFI system table in UFI systems. After getting this RSDP, operating system can discover all other tables of the ACPI. And these tables can be broadly classified as static and dynamic tables. There are many static tables. The RSDP will have a physical pointer to extended system description table. And all the tables are uh, having the pointer from this XSDT. And one of the uh, example of dynamic table is the DSDT, which, which will have dynamic ACPI machine language bytecode or AML bytecode. And they are encoded in ML bytecode. This is known as ACPI namespace popularly in operating system world. It's a tree-like structure, a hierarchical structure, which provides the description about uh, platform devices, their capabilities, and uh, the methods to control those features. However, unlike static information, this is uh, 
AML bytecode information and it needs a AML interpreter in the operating system uh, for um, understanding this uh, tables. And this will provide ACPA methods to abstract the hardware configuration, which is another important feature of ACPI. So with that background of ACPI, let's try to understand why, why it is so beneficial in the enterprise world. First of all, the AML bytecode allows the platform to encode the hardware behavior. It's a key requirement to support multiple operating systems on the hardware. And newer hardware doesn't need major change in the operating system most of the time. And uh, it is easy to support that. ACPI has well-established mechanisms in the industry, uh, especially uh, important features of enterprise world like uh, reliability, availability, and serviceability, uh, also known as RAS. The platform abstraction, which I mentioned earlier, it helps in breaking the dependency between uh, platform firmware release and operating system support. Typically, enterprise servers will have long release cycles, unlike in the embedded world where firmware and operating system support happens together, the server's world would support different operating systems at different timelines. Hence, an architecture neutral interface is very much desired. Since ACPI provides the platform abstraction, the hardware vendors can take the responsibility for system behavior uh, for features like power management, independent of the operating system release cycle. This helps in support model also, with clear boundary of uh, responsibilities between hardware vendors and operating system vendors. And because ACPI provides a consistent abstraction that can be maintained for a long time, it can be very useful in providing the backward compatibility for operating system. And finally, enterprise hardware vendors prefer to support multiple operating systems on same hardware and firmware. There are some enterprise class operating systems which don't support anything other than ACPI. So having single standard interface which works for different operating systems is a mandatory requirement from hardware vendor perspective. And so as you can see, none of these reasons above are specific to RISC-V but common across CPU architectures. And all these reasons are explained well by Grant Lakely with more details for ARM. And I have given that link in the references uh, slide later. You can go through that to understand. So as we understood the basics about ACPI, let us uh, quickly look at uh, what it takes to enable uh, ACPI for RISC-V. I had shown a very similar picture earlier where uh, RSDP points to other tables, XSDT will have all the entries to the tables, etc. Here in this picture, I have marked some of the tables in red. That means uh, they need ACPI specification updates. The first one is the multiple epic description table uh, or MADT which basically provides information about the interrupt controllers in the system. And definitely different CPU architectures will have different types of interrupt controllers, like ARM will have GIG, etc. And uh, so similarly for RISC-V, we need to provide the information about RISC-V interrupt controllers in substructures of MADT. Because we are talking about server class platforms here, we have plans to support ACPI only for systems with advanced interpreter architecture of RISC-V or AIA. The MADT table will have three different structures for RISC-V. The first one is local interrupt controller structure, which is per heart. And the second one is IMSIC group structure. Basically all hearts will have IMSICs, but operating system needs single IMSIC node, hence this will be called IMSIC group. And the third one is an optional, but 
many common use cases might be having it, which is a plic structure per socket. This is required to convert uh, wired interrupts into MSI. This is an existing uh, table update in the ACP specification. However, we probably need a couple of new tables altogether in the ACPI. The first one, first new table is RTDT or risk fight timer description table to describe the timer and watchdog. Uh, currently, this is being used to mainly to communicate the time-based frequency to the operating system. However, based on the requirements in future, we can add other details about this timer and watchdog device. The third one is to communicate the hard capabilities. As you all know, RISC-V allows many uh, optional features and implementation of the RISC-V processor can support a subset of those optional features. Some of them may have a standard extension names. Some features may not have a standard extension names. So all these capabilities need to be communicated to the operating system via ACPI table. And I call it as RISC-V hard capabilities table or RISC-V RHCT. Uh, this is again a single static table uh, per system, which will have information about all the hearts. Coming to the dynamic content or ACPI namespace, uh, we need a new ACPI uh, device called a for APLIC. Um, that means the we need to request for new APLIC, uh, ACP ID for the APLIC. Please note that uh, this pro these are still proposals and uh, they are not reviewed yet by the uh, ASWG group, ACPI specification working group of UEFI forum. Uh, so uh, you, you can uh, understand that the names or some contents can change uh, over time based on the feedback before it gets into the ACP specification. Okay, so based on that, we have done some prototype effort. Uh, it is spread across QMU, EDK2 and uh, Linux kernel. In QMU, basically the enabling complete ACPI infrastructure or table infrastructure according to the specification and uh, new tables like MADT, RHCT or RTDT. And in, and in MADT, especially uh, per CPU, uh, interrupt controller, local interrupt controllers and creating IMSIC groups and uh, the uh, APLIC, APLIC related information, etc. In DSDT, uh, apart from standard peripherals like UART and Vault.io, et cetera, processor, et cetera, we have also added APLIC device in the namespace with uh, underscore mat, a standard method to get the interrupt controller information of the device uh, supported in the namespace. EDK2 is mostly a pass-through uh, because QMU is only creating the ACPI tables also for the platform. Unlike on the real hardware where EDK2 creates the ACP names, uh, ACP tables uh, using the ASL uh, source uh, files. I just had to enable some of the ACP Dixie uh, methods uh, to install, I mean, to read from the uh, QMU firmware config table and install it in the proper way uh, for the operating system consumption in the EDK2. In Linux kernel, uh, first of all, we need to enable complete uh, ACPI infrastructure, which is currently disabled for ISPI. So this enables ACPI uh, interpreter, etc., and also add some architecture-specific uh, code um, for ISPI into the uh, ACPI uh, modules. Then all uh, different drivers need to be updated with the ACPI support. Um, so basically single operating system image will work for systems with DT or ACPI based on detecting whether ACPI tables are installed or not. If ACPI tables are installed, it will try to probe the devices or enumerate the devices via uh, ACPI way. And uh, if uh, DT is installed, it will use DT. Recommendation is not to install both either install uh, ACPI or DT. 
but single os image will work uh, across here is the screenshot of uh, linux kernel booting with acpi support on qmu systems as you can see the highlighted one it operating system is uh, detecting these new tables uh, along with the standard tables like uh, rsdp or xsdt etc uh, you can see that rtdt rhct uh, also are detected and on the right hand side uh, like i mentioned the drivers are initialized using acpi way and then the acpi namespace uh, comes up with uh, because uh, at this point of time aml interpreter is enabled as i mentioned earlier uh, aml interpreter is mandatory to understand the acpi namespace or dsdt and uh, after that you can see that the applic device which is part of the namespace the driver for that is getting initialized only after aml interpreter is up on the right hand side uh, another namespace component uh, which is peripheral uh, uart and a serial driver for that you uart is also uh, detecting the acpi device and then uh, claiming uh, its uh, pnp driver finally the kernel boots into the login prompt and uh, you can see the acpi devices in the sysfs okay so that was about basic enablement of acpi uh, as i said these proposals need to be reviewed and approved by the swg and uh, we need to send those proposals but before that within risc5 community we need to freeze those structure definitions uh, as per non isa uh, ratification plan and one dependency for that is the rat is the aia specification because uh, like i mentioned mdt needs aia um, uh, specification so which is not at frozen so that is why uh, we need to freeze the acp aia specification and then freeze the uh, acpi uh, specification within the respy community after that we can get it approved by the aswg in terms of advanced acp feature which are pending to be enabled the first one is pptt a uh, processor properties topology table which provides the hierarchical information about uh, processor and cache the, mostly required by the performance optimization software in the operating system and uh, numa related uh, ras uh, related like uh, srat slit or api error injection error uh, detection etc uh, tables of acpi need to be enabled power and performance management via acpi way like cppc or pcct need to be enabled watchdog need to be enabled in acpi way and then we definitely need to enhance some of the debug tools with some of the new tables which we are going to define for acpi like acpi view or acpi dump tools and definitely we need to add some of these new things to the compliant test suite of acpi here are some of the references which you can which you can go through later uh, and let me know if you have any uh, questions or feedback definitely acpi is a key requirement for enterprise class servers and support enabling acpi for risc 5 at least basic support will open up um, uh, many software stack and operating systems to be supported on risc 5 which are strictly depending upon acpi support so uh, this is a very important feature and uh, uh, if you can collaborate and then give feedback or uh, uh, help us that will be of very great help thank you very much you can reach out to me at this email address and uh, have a good day hi everyone uh so i got few questions uh, uh, on the chat thank you very much for that uh, i hope you can hear me um, so one uh, question is uh, don't we need acpi id for the imsic device uh, we don't need for imsic because imsic is a not imsic is not a device in acpi namespace only applic is uh, required in in the acpi namespace so we don't need a 
IMSIC uh, uh, ACP ID for IMSIC device, and the driver for it will be uh, using the MIDT table to uh, climb. And the other two questions are kind of related. What will be the format of the RHCT table? And uh, uh, what is the relationship to the config tech group? Config tech group is actually defining uh, the overall schema of uh, the extensions and how they are grouped and other things, which are in the early boot part of it. And uh, uh, the uh, early firmware like mod firmware will take that and uh, copy it to the uh, ACPI or DT in the format of RHCT table. So the, the RHCT table for extensions are still TBD. Uh, so currently in the POC, I'm having only the ISA extension details in the standard uh, ISA register, uh, but uh, all other extensions, even though I have a proposal, uh, but uh, it has to be aligned with the tech config group uh, definition. So uh, once they define, we have to align uh, this ACPI table also along, uh, along with those lines. And uh, I think uh, I think these are some questions. Uh, any idea of the hardware cost as percentage of Linux capable Risk Five core? I have no idea. Uh, I I don't know what I don't probably understand this question also. Uh, what is the meaning of this hardware cost? Uh, Probably I'm missing something here. Uh, I think other two things uh, here is actually answers to the tech config or RHCT questions. So anything else uh, you have? Uh, anything, any live questions? Um, I forgot to mention that uh, we have a GitHub also for RISC-V. So even uh, you can uh, raise an issue or questions uh, question in the GitHub also. Uh, which is there in the slides as a reference. So you can, uh, in case you, you want to reach out with your feedback or question, you can raise an issue there also. And uh, uh, we have plans for uh, uh, ratification of uh, this uh, ACPI and uh, uh, basically it should follow the non-ISA ratification plan. And um, uh, uh, so, uh, that will follow that uh, plan. And uh, once we get this uh, internally within the risk by community, uh, all these structures and tables uh, finalized, then we will we have plans to send it to the ACPI uh, forum to update in the specification. Okay. Okay, uh, I hope I answered the questions and uh, hope there are no more questions. And as I said earlier, uh, you can reach out to me or directly, or uh, you can uh, raise an issue in the GitHub. Uh, your feedback will be really beneficial. This is the first time we are, I think uh, compared to other architectures, we are even before things are finalized in ACPI, we are discussing this. So there is ample opportunity to refine the things even before it gets into the ACPI specification. So I look forward for your uh, collaboration on this. Thank you very much. Have a good day.